In this video, we're comparing the two mid-tier mirrorless kings at the moment, the brand new Canon EOS R6 Mark II and the Sony a7 IV. Both of these cameras at the moment cost the exact same amount of money. Hold up, wait a minute. A dollar? And both of them do a lot of the same things. So hopefully at the end of this video, you'll be able to decide which one is best for you. We rented out a location and got an actor, Josh, to help us shoot some really cinematic footage. Our DP, Chris Haggerty, used his skills and the hobo light. Golly, look how beautiful it is to create a really cool little setup. We had some retro TVs, an album player. What was that other thing that we had there? That like radio thing? We had an eight track and a bunch of old retro comics. And of course a fog machine to make everything look as cinematic as we possibly could using these two cameras. We didn't want to just shoot a bunch of random stuff. We want to actually give you guys some pretty looking footage on both of these cameras. And both of these cameras were shooting at the maximum settings possible, giving us 4K 10 bit, 24 frames per second in their respected log formats. The Sony with S-Log3 in the cinema gamut and Canon with Canon Log3 in BT709. We also had matching lenses, a 24 to 70 on both of these cameras. We did our best to match the white balance. So when we look at the footage, there will be some differences because each sensor is obviously different. This was really supposed to be a real world test because this is how you guys are gonna use these cameras. You're gonna go out and do shoots and not necessarily just look at numbers and tests all the time. However, if you wanna watch one of those, go watch one of Gerald's videos. He'll do a chart for you. Overall, both bodies, I think are good. Nothing really stood out to me, but one thing that really stinks about the R6 is that Canon has continued to use the micro HDMI port. That's definitely a big downside with the Canon because Sony has a nice big chunky, thick, full-size HDMI. So I'd say that's a point for Sony in that regard. But with the Canon, one thing that I really like is this photo video switch here. But Sony does have that as well. Below the mode dial is a switch that does essentially the same thing. So I think overall, both bodies are great, but big win for Canon with the body, it's well designed. It feels really comfortable in the hand. It's definitely more comfortable than the Sony. It's just softer, it's got rounder edges. One of the main reasons that you would choose one of these cameras as a 4K video capturing tool is because of the down res that both of these cameras can do. The a7 IV is a 33 megapixel sensor and the Canon is a 24 megapixel sensor. So both of these cameras are doing internal down resing of the sensor to give you a really sharp and clean result. And I definitely know noticed the higher megapixel count with just a sharper image overall on the Sony. This is with no sharpening applied to the footage. This is just the S-Log with a LUT applied to it. You can just see how sharp Josh's beard is in these shots. And when you compare that to the Canon, it definitely is sharp. I mean, it's a nice clean 4K image, but it doesn't have that clinical sharpness that the Sony has. Again, this may be something that you want and it's always better to have more than less, I guess, because you can always dial it down by adding a filter like a Black Pro Mist filter or even softening it in post. But you may even argue the other way around that you would rather just have a nice clean image and add sharpness if you want more sharpness in post, which I think the R6 would handle very well. Now, obviously color science is subjective, but in my opinion, I felt that the Canon had a pleasing color tone. It, it seemed to feel the way that I like images to look. Not to say that you can't get an image similar with the Sony. In fact, if you're a professional colorist or you know one, or you have some great LUTs that you like to use, the Sony gives you everything Everything you need to get a beautiful image in post. Canon gets a point for color science, but Sony gets a point for sharpness. Let's talk about ISO noise performance on both of these cameras. We did a full ISO test on both cameras, but even in the non ISO test, we noticed quite a bit of noise in the Canon, unfortunately. This is a camera that you're gonna really have to work hard to expose properly for because I'm seeing a lot of grain in the shadow areas on this sensor. If you zoom in on Josh's dark shirt, in this scene, you can clearly see quite a bit of noise going on in the shadows. And this was exposed properly at the lowest base ISO setting, which the base ISO on the R6 is ISO 800. We were just shooting in C-Log3. We were even exposing a little bit over. We were exposing to the right quite a bit to hopefully bring that down in post and clean up the shadows. That's what I've known to do for C-Log3 over the years with different cameras. And I was hoping to see a cleaner image on the Canon. And that is definitely not the case. When you go over to the Sony and it's base ISO, again, 800 on the Sony as well. You don't see that at all. In fact, it's pretty perfect. I don't see any noise at that ISO range. And certainly in the high ISO examples, we noticed even better results as you go up. The two native ISOs on the a7 IV are ISO 800 and 3200. That actually means that at both 800 and 3200, you're getting the best dynamic range and the best noise performance. So 
if you're in a low light scenario and you are cranking it up to like 1600 ISO, go ahead and go up a little further to 3200. You'll actually see less noise if you go higher. That's not possible. Because the R6 Mark II is so new, we don't have a lot of information about it yet. And I'm not sure if it has a dual native ISO. We weren't able to determine that in our testing. If we find out, we'll let you know in the comment section below. Or if you know, please let us know. But we were shooting in the native ISO on this, which was 800. Definitely a win in the Sony camp when it comes to noise performance and dynamic range. Boo. <laughs> I want Canon to win. Now one feature about the Canon that we did not test that I think is worth mentioning is the fact that it can output a 6K ProRes RAW signal over HDMI. Even though it's the cruddy little micro HDMI port, if you're using the new Atomos recorder, you can record 6K ProRes out. This is something that I would love to test and is certainly one reason to consider picking up this camera if that's important to you. We only shot internally, which by the way, both of these cameras record to UHS-2 card slots and there's two of them, which is wonderful, especially if you're using a new MacBook with that wonderful SD card slot on the side. Finally! Now the next feature that I was excited to test on both of these cameras is the autofocus performance. Sony is known for having incredible autofocus and the a7 IV is no exception. It's got eye tracking and the ability to touch track and it's very good. But I think Canon's the winner here because the R6 Mark II is using the same type of algorithm as their flagship camera, the R3, which is best in class. The R6 autofocus in this shoot was much stickier than the Sony and it found the eye perfectly almost every time and it felt very natural. It didn't feel robotic at all. Whereas the Sony, it would kind of go in and out occasionally and it would feel a little robotic and maybe adjust these things in the settings. But I was very impressed with the Canon's autofocus performance. Canon has now finally added face only focus on this camera as well, which is similar to their cinema line, which basically only focuses on a person's face. Most cameras like Sony, when the subject leaves the frame, the camera just kind of automatically focuses on the next thing behind the subject. This face only mode is much more natural and it's kind of how we want to use a camera. It's basically just focus on the human and when the human leaves the frame, the focus just stays there. It just feels natural. It's a great feature. Feature. It's really just a software feature. So I don't see why Sony couldn't do it on their camera, but the R6 has this. So I think because of that, the Canon wins in this category. Autofocus, Canon. Quick feature that I want to mention on both of these cameras is again, because the sensor is larger than 4K on both of these, you can shoot in full frame and in crop mode, both in 4K. So this is great for people who are using adapted lenses. Maybe you're using cinema lenses that are super 35 only. Both of these cameras will accept a PL mount accessory and you could use those lenses very easily on both of these cameras. Now on that topic of using cinema lenses on these, there is no anamorphic mode. It's only a 16 by nine image on both of these. So you're gonna have to use an anamorphic lens that isn't a full 2X anamorphic. I would love to see open gate recording on both of these cameras if they could do it with firmware. Open gate recording is the future. Give us open gate. Next is IBIS. Both of these cameras have in-body image stabilization and I'm just gonna say it, Sony wins again in this category. <laughs> Canon has done a decent job with their stabilization, but it's just wobbly and it doesn't look good. It's good enough for little moves. Like we were using this on the slider and I think the IBIS helped stabilize some of the little micro jitters that were going on and that's great. And if you're just holding the camera stationary, kind of using it almost like a monopod, you can use the IBIS in that way. It'll stabilize the footage and it'll look fine. Once you start moving and walking with it, if you're doing a vlog or you're trying to even use this on a gimbal, I would definitely turn IBIS off if you're using this camera on a gimbal because the IBIS just kind of wobbles all over the place and it creates this distracting warping of the image. The Sony on the other hand does not do that. This camera has really great IBIS. It's subtle enough to where you just don't see that wobble going on. Their active stabilization works really well if you need something that's really extreme. My favorite feature that is on all the new Sony cameras that just doesn't exist at all for Canon is utilizing catalyst browse to do post-production stabilization. The way that you do this properly is you turn off the IBIS in the camera and you actually crank your shutter speed up a little bit higher than your traditional 180 degree shutter angle so that you don't have as much blurriness going on in the image. And you apply stabilization in post using Sony's own Catalyst Browse software. What that does is it applies stabilization using the gyro data that is in this camera baked into the footage and it looks insane. And back in the old days, I would 
just try to make do with warp stabilizer inside of After Effects, but there's only so far that you can go with that before it starts looking kind of wonky and weird. I think it's a wonderful feature. And Canon, will you please try to do something like this? You think they care what we say? So definitely a huge point for Sony on the stabilization. And I want to mention something else that I think is important to consider between these two cameras. And that is if you're starting from scratch and you don't have any investment in either a line, Sony is probably the better option in terms of lenses. Sony just has so many wonderful lenses available that they make, that Tamron and Sigma make, other third-party companies make, but their lens lineup is so thorough and so compact, so sharp, so high quality. The bokeh is great. But when it comes to Canon, obviously, if you have a large investment in EF lenses like this older 24 to 70 F 2.8 lens that we use, you can just use a Canon adapter and get really great performance. In fact, it's truly native. Even though it's an adapter, it's made by the same company. So they communicate perfectly with each other. But then you're using these big, heavy lenses. I mean, look at the difference here. You can clearly see how much bigger the Canon lens is to the Sony. Canon has their own RF lineup, but I feel like it's just very lackluster at the moment in terms of variety. Their lenses are fantastic. The optics are beautiful. They all have IS. They're expensive, but Canon has not opened up their mount to third parties like Sigma and Tamron. I don't understand why they won't do that. Sony just has them beat with their lens lineup. There's just so many more options, so many different variations of lenses, and you of course have the third party option. So big win for Sony. So which camera do I recommend? If you're a full-time filmmaker first, I hate to say it, but I do think the a7 IV is probably the correct option. Yeah, baby, that's what I've been waiting for. But as an artist, I wanna use a brush that makes me happy. A lot of the features of the Sony do make me happy. Like I said, Callus Brows and the autofocus performance, the lens lineup. But I think Canon has just a more comfortable camera to use. It's a more intuitive system with their UI, with the touch screen, with the beautiful autofocus reliability and just the straight out of box color science. It's great. What do you think of these two cameras? Do you agree with me? Do you think that the R6 Mark II is the right brush for your artistic endeavors? Or is the a7 IV the practical and correct solution? Let me know in the comment section down below and make sure to subscribe to Soundstripe. I'm your host, Dave Mays. This is Soundstripe and we'll see you next time.